Good afternoon, this is Charles Kelly, Money Tips. The price of Bitcoin today surged uh, to $67,000 as an ETF fund was launched in New York. An ETF is an exchange traded fund, which is essentially like a pooled investment that's kind of uh, moved on from, say, unit trust and mutual funds. And it will probably track the price of Bitcoin and maybe some other uh, cryptocurrencies. And the UK had a fund like this a few years ago, and I was in a fund, and it was going up and up and up, and then they just closed the fund down. Uh, I'd, I'd put some money into it, and it was doing really well. I thought, this is great. And uh, then it just sort of closed down, and they just refunded everybody's money. So it was, it was and I think now that they're not, that they're left out of it, now this fund is, is launched in New York. But anyway, that's, that's Bitcoin. Um, I, I don't consider it as a secure, safe investment. I don't consider it as a proper currency yet. And regulation is set to come on Bitcoin. So I, I, I would be careful. The four main investment areas that people invest in or, or can invest in, regulated types of investments, are, you know, there's, there's really about four of them. I mean, you've got stocks and shares, which is one. That's, that's shares, stocks, shares, equities is, is all similar thing. Uh, and you can invest on various markets in that, but they're all regulated markets. So you generally know what you're buying. Uh, then there, there are bonds, which are, uh, government issued debts really you, you, the government is borrowing money from you and paying you a fixed interest or an interest rate and then you guarantee to get your money back sometimes they're called treasury bonds t-bills or in the uk they're called gilts uh, that, then you've got um, a property and this is usually a, a commercial property uh, where, where people are uh, investing into a fund usually uh, and th those funds invest into uh, commercial property, buildings, offices, shops, and that sort of thing. And those are the, the type of areas that you can invest in through your, your pension fund uh, and, and, and regulated types of investment. You can directly invest in those as well. The other area is gold and precious metals, where you could invest and, and buy gold. You can buy gold coins, gold bullion, gold funds, gold shares, that sort of thing. And of course, you... Other investments would include things like your your business is, is an investment. Investing in yourself is an investment. Investing in training, education is an investment. My best investments have not been property, although they've been very good. It's been the businesses that I invested in in myself, uh, which you know we, we myself and a partner started it from scratch, from nothing, and it made money. Uh, even my own financial services business, which I ran from myself. Um, that, that generated money with a few hundred pounds of investment. That generated uh, perpetual returns, if you like, ultimate profits, just based on my efforts. So there's, there's other types of investments. Obviously, you can, you can put money into things like Bitcoin, specialist areas, antiques. Um, you can put your money into all sorts of stuff, gems. Uh, then, then, then there's commodities as well. You know, you can invest in the copper markets. You know, there's... there's there's, there's hundreds of types, but the four main ones are the ones that I've, I've just mentioned. Now, I'm going to run through a few financial things going on today. Joe Biden is trying to uh, sell his flagship spending bill. This is after they printed more money than has ever been printed. Uh, and the, the Republican Party are, are kind of against this. He wants to spend 3.5, not billion, trillion. That's 3.5 billion times a thousand. 3.5 trillion dollars printed out of, of thin air, uh, for what? What are they going to blow it on? You know, it, it's just bonkers. It's just crazy. And in some ways, they have to keep spending to keep paying their debts that they, they already owe. It's like getting another credit card to pay off the credit card that you've got and the other credit cards. And eventually, you're going to run out of companies to give you credit cards. And that, that will eventually happen. Now, in the UK, um, we are being warned by... Uh, I don't know if you can see this. every time I try and turn it, it goes a different way. Um, by Sajid Javid, the health secretary, uh, to act now or expect to return to COVID curbs this winter, he tells the public. So he's telling people, you must get your booster jab, you must do this, you must do that. Um, it's like it's almost a threat, it's a warning or a threat, or almost blackmailing us to say, unless you get your booster jabs, we're going to lock you down. Uh, this Christmas. Uh, so what that will do to the economy is, is, is only, and it just beggars belief that we haven't even come out of this recession and 
we're, we're talking about uh, more trouble ahead for the economy if they lock things down again and close uh, you know, businesses and uh, hospitality and you know, goodness knows what else. Uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the Bank of England are already concerned ab about the economy uh, and this could be a further blow. Now, the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, is uh, an authority a, 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 a bit like the, um, what, what do you call them in America, the, uh, the federal something. Um, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. But it's, it's the regulator here that regulates the City of London, insurance companies, banks, that sort of thing, financial things, Financial Conduct Authority. It's, it's come in many guises over the years. It's changed from FCA to this to that. Uh, but it's basically the regulator of, of most things financial in the UK. Now, usually what happens if a bank uh, gets into trouble or they do something wrong, the FCA steps in. So FCA will probe this bank. FCA will investigate this company. But now... The FCA has been investigated themselves. The FCA has been investigated over its role in the, the steelworkers pension fund scandal. The, it's, it's just, you couldn't make this up. The, the FCA, the, the, regu the financial regulator, services regulator, are being investigated by the government because of its, its role and, and lack of action by the National Audit Office uh, in its role in the British steelworkers pension fund scandal. This is when uh, British steelworkers were making a lot of people redundant in Wales. This is so that we could send the steelworks to another country to, 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 so we could import steel. That really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But anyway, the people who had pension funds that were guaranteed final salary, defined benefit pension schemes, were, were introduced to a load of financial advisors, I think, by, by the company. I don't know quite how it worked, but thousands of them were advised to pull out their pension funds and invest it themselves into different types of schemes. They said would make them more money. Now, I don't know the individual details of it, but they come out of a guaranteed fund where you get a guaranteed pension for life. And, and someone said, no, if you pull that out, uh, we'll get a lot, very large lump sum that you can do more with. And you know this is true because the, the, the company offering the guaranteed pension fund, uh, the, 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 which is British Steel, they are backing it, are glad to get rid of the the, the liabilities of providing this guarantee because they have to give a guaranteed benefit and then guaranteed increases every year. And th this costs money and perhaps the pension fund wasn't quite funded enough. So they are glad to say, right, here is uh, £300,000 or here is £200,000 to just go away. And, and this happens all the time. But then it's a question of what do you do with that money? Now, a lot of people, even now, are being persuaded to uh, invest into schemes where they'll, they'll, they'll set up a self-administered pension scheme with the money and then lend it out to themselves or lend it out to companies, uh, do commercial developments, which is fine in a market where it's going up. But what about if these people don't know what they're doing? What about if they make some mistakes? That pension fund could be, could be lost. And that's kind of what's happened to these steel workers. Some of them had guaranteed pension schemes and they've lost everything. Now, perhaps looking back, they probably said, well, here's your guaranteed pension fund. It's 10,000 a year, 5,000 a year. And they thought, well, I can't live on that. So I'd rather cash it all in and, and get my, you know, two or 300,000 pounds. And then we can invest it in these new sexy investments, which can grow and give you money and this sort of stuff. And, and of course, the, the sexy investments didn't happen. So looking back, obviously, they would have been better to stay with the guaranteed fund. But perhaps the guaranteed fund didn't look very interesting to them because it wasn't quite enough. Uh, to, to give them a comfortable retirement. So it, what I'm saying to you is if, if you are advised to pull out of a final salary scheme, get proper advice. Well, you have to get proper advice anyway. But, you know, advisors will say, look, this is what you should do. And you say, yeah, yeah, don't mind that. Just give me the money. Just give me the money. Give, let me sign that. And, and sometimes it can make sense to pull it out. Um, but in, in many cases, if you're not a sophisticated investor, then it, it can be very, very risky indeed, especially if you don't understand it. And now a lot of people now say, no, I didn't understand that. So they're coming back and suing uh, the, the, the financial companies, the regulators and all sorts. Of, so it's the, it's the FCA have been investigated. Now, a second investigation is going on. MPs have called into question the FCA's inaction uh, when it investigated uh, money laundering at NatWest Bank. Right. Money laundering at NatWest Bank. The police were called in in 2016. I think the fraud squad or the serious fraud office. And that was 2016. And it took five years before NatWest eventually said, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we plead guilty. Thanks very much. 
So hang on, what are they doing for five years? Uh, it, it just again, it just beggars belief what, what's going on in that that organisation, and and you know, and yet companies um, uh, go bust all the time, and nothing's done about it, and the people lose their money, and and what did the FCA do? Nothing. Uh, I, I when I was in financial services, I operated an um, under an, an umbrella company, uh, which regulated me and you know a hundred other advisors. So rather than me being directly regulated by the then, I think it was a financial services authority, the FCA at the time, which would have been a pain in the neck for a, uh, a small firm. I went in with an umbrella company that um, that dealt, dealt with all the regulation, and then you worked under them, and, and they took and you gave them a cut of your earnings and, and paid them fees, and they took care of all your compliance. Um, that company had a, a, an inspection by the then FCA, and they said, "Yeah, no problem, clean bill of health." Two weeks later, they went bust. So how could they not see that? How could they not see that this company were going bust? The, the, the director of the company was pulling out money to, to invest in his son's business. He was pulling out money that shouldn't have been pulled out of the company. It, it, it is just, uh, it's, it's just crazy. Uh, the airports authority here, the Heathrow Airport is not owned by a British company. It's owned by a consortium, Spanish uh, and a Chinese company. They're jacking up the prices of everything. It costs five pounds just to go and drop somebody off at the airport. Just, even if you drop them off outside the door on, the, on the, the driveway, in and out, they charge you five pounds. Not to park there, just to drop off. Luton are doing the same thing. And, and yet, uh, they said they need these charges. Now they're putting up charges again. They need these charges to cope with the lockdown. But just before the lockdown happened, and, and during the, the pandemic, the di directors took 100 million in dividends out of that company. They've had billions in dividends since they took over at Heathrow Airport. So what's going on? Where are the FCA? I, I, I don't know. Um, now, moving on to other things, uh, Evergrande in, uh, in China tried to offload $2.6 billion of assets to another company, and that deal has fallen through. So what's going to happen now? We don't know. Uh, the, the China, I was reading the FT today, the Financial Times, the China uh, property boom seems to be coming to an end. It's, it's a 20-year boom. Uh, prices have dipped slightly of properties. Things seem to be, the party's over there, I think, in property. That accounts for half of its economy. That's going to have a knock-on effect for companies all over the world that supply raw materials, say Australia, South Africa, uh, and, and, and parts of Africa that supply these raw materials, Brazil as well. So that's going to have a knock-on effect. But I, I don't know what's going to happen with Evergrande. They've failed to meet payments. So has um, Fantasia, the, the, the fantasy company. Um, they, they've failed to meet those, those debt repayments. That's called arrears. You know, if you don't pay your mortgage here, they, they, say, they send you a letter, you're in arrears. We, we're coming to get you. We're coming to uh, evict you. And, and this is happening. Uh, this has happened to commercial companies here. But there's been this, this payment holiday scheme here and in America, um, which has, has protected uh, not only private tenants, but commercial uh, tenants from being evicted. But a very big property company called Hammerson that owns uh, places like the Bull Ring in, in, um, in, in Birmingham and, and, and lots of other businesses uh, is focusing now on these rent arrears. They've, they've, they've effectively lost £50 million in, in uh, rent cuts, write-offs and deferrals. Um, but now that the shops and, and, and places are getting back to normal, they, they kind of want their money. So I think the party's over for those shops. And I, I do feel sorry for the shops because they've had to put down with lock, put up with lockdowns, put down with up, locks, lock ups, put put up with lockdowns uh, for so long that I, I don't know how many of them survived. And that's why many of them have actually gone out of business. Uh, so that's going on there. Uh, we, we could see more uh, shops closing if, if the, the landlords get tough with them. And, and as a survey out by the Joseph Roundtree Trust that um, that started, you know, were, were involved in the early uh, formation of things like the food bank. Uh, they are a charity that, that looks after, looks into to, to poverty in the UK. They've said that up to uh, a third of, of people, low earners, are now struggling to meet basic payments, uh, bills, electricity, gas bills, and rent. Uh, and, and this rent moratorium is over now. So are we going to see more um, uh, evictions in, in the private sector? 
and, and also, I mean, housing associations evict people as well, not just private landlords. They can be really tough and nasty, some of those people. Uh, so, so I don't think they're going to do you any favours. But you know, obviously you've got to feel for the landlord, because the landlords have got commitments as well. So they can't afford to have a property where the tenant says, I'm not paying you, I can't pay you. Um, I've got to buy this big TV for Christmas. Uh, so so you, you, there's two sides to the, to the coin there. You've got to look at both sides. And <clears throat> talking of uh, lockdowns and, and things, Rishi Sunak wants to extend COVID recovery loans. Uh, and the amount uh, backed up by government lent to British companies during COVID is £80 billion. Pounds. That's not government money, by the way. That's taxpayers' money. And now they want to extend it. It was due to end... The scheme is due to end in, in December that he wants to extend it. Obviously, they see that the recovery is not happening. So the last thing they need is, a, is another lockdown there. Um, and now, do you ever use uh, uh, Pinterest? Do you ever use a social media platform called Pinterest? Pinterest, do you, where you pin these photos and then you look at them and then what? I don't know what you do with them. Uh, I, I've used it for many years. Personally, I think it's a waste of time, a waste of space. Um, so why then... Is it worth $45 billion? I mean, I've used it for years. I've never given them a penny. I don't know who pays them for anything. I know they sell some stuff there. But um, they're valued now at $45 billion. And uh, PayPal, who are cash-rich, very successful company, employing hundreds of thousands of people, sort of 72,000 people all over the world. They make a lot of money. Uh, they want to, they're on a spending spree. They want to... Uh, go on this acquisition spree to to boost up their share price so the directors can take more bonuses and more um, uh, uh, chunks of money out of the business by by boosting growth artificially by just keep buying up things like Pinterest. But 45 billion, it, it just seems like a nonsense to me that the whole thing is a nonsense. It was a bit like that WeWork company that were going to uh, float, the, the WeWork serviced office company that's all over the world. They were going to float, I think they were going to float and it was supposed to be valued at 50 billion. Now that, you know, that was fortunately for investors, that was called off and people realised what they're actually worth. They were losing money. Now it's going to be merged with another company in a nine million, nine billion merger. So it's quite a come down from, you know, selling these shares for like 50 billion and saying we're worth 50 billion. When you really, you know, look inside what it's actually worth as, as a proper business person would do. So what is it worth? You know, what are you actually making? I, I knew... I, I went into we, WeWork's offices to visit clients. I thought, well, they're giving away free coffee, free everything, free beer. Free beer, yeah, in, in, in the offices. It was like a free-for. They had parties every Friday night. And it was very, very expensive city locations. And I thought, well, how are these people making money? Now I know they weren't making any money. Uh, so, so there you go. Um, that, that's another story there. Um, I told you about the NatWest situation, the pressure on them. And just watch out for... Uh, investments and, and, and things like Bitcoin, that, like the flavor of the month type investment, stick to what you, you really know and understand. That's the, the first rule. And the, the road to financial freedom is not an overnight success. You know, uh, someone who makes their fortune overnight usually loses it overnight as well. So, so just you know, be careful. Uh, in, in my training, I teach people financial freedom. In fact, I mean, what does financial freedom mean to you? Financial freedom you might have this vision of someone sitting on a beach and a sunny beach under a palm tree with a cocktail, you know, with a little laptop there. Yeah, that, that's, that can be financial freedom. Uh, great. Um, I mean, financial freedom, the real definition of it is, is um, you know, having enough money from your investments or your passive income to not have to work, to not have to go and exchange your time for money. So to me, that, that is what financial freedom means. Now, you don't have to be on a beach to, to be financially free. A pensioner earning uh, a modest pension, a guaranteed pension, maybe from the government or a good private pension scheme that, that's giving them a guaranteed pension with, with uh, inflation increases that has maybe paid off their mortgage, they are financially free. You know, they may not be you know, super rich. They're not billionaires, but they're financially free. Uh, uh, there's a big move in the UK now and, and parts of Europe to kind of downsize and go back to nature and live in these wooden built houses that you can build for 50 or 60 thousand pounds or even less if you do a lot of it yourself so you buy a little plot of land in the forest somewhere you build this like eco-friendly type of house in the side of a hill or part you know to blend in with the with the forest or blend in with the land and that sort of stuff and they're not big these places some of them are, are smaller than an average kitchen 
so they're, they're, they're micro huts, they're micro living if you like. But if you can if you can do that and and you can live without having to go to the office, get on that train and commute and exchange your life and your time for money, uh, which is not much fun unless you really love your work, uh, then then you are financially free. If you've got enough money to live on and and you know whatever that, that that will come from and you can downsize your large property that you probably don't need and and you can move into a smaller place or one of these eco type places um, i mean there there are even uh, people buying converted containers that that can can be converted into you know large studio places or you can get two and two into one that side of thing and uh, so so there are all sorts of ways people can become financially free sometimes people can become financially free by so moving in with a family member, sharing a house, sharing bills, then they haven't got the, the, the stresses and strains that they had when they're on their own. So there's all sorts of ways of financial. What does it mean to you? Does it mean not having to go to work, being able to quit your job? Does it mean being able to spend time with your children, not grandchildren, play golf, travel? What does it mean to you? Whatever it means to you, you need to, to plan for it because the state is not going to look after you. There's a massive pensions time bomb out there uh, the, the OECD, in fact, uh, mentioned this uh, this week that and they didn't mention specific countries, but they said uh, most countries are going to have to increase the pension age uh, to, to cope with the the the, 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 the spectre of uh, the ratio of people working to retiring, changing, less people working to, to, to more people retiring, people living longer and so on. And the fact that the pensions are not even funded, they're funded by taxpayers in most countries. So it's a Ponzi scheme, in other words. So you know, what I'm trying to say to you is that don't say, well, the state will look after me. I heard this many times as a financial advisor. Oh, the state will take care of me. No, they won't. Uh, you've got to save. You've got to invest and, and create some sort of passive income. When I say invest, it's no good leaving it in the bank. I talked about this yesterday. If you leave it in the bank, you're earning 100 times less than you would if you just went out and bought something like uh, a, a box of bleach that is, we know is going to go up by 10% in the next year or some soap, some consumable item, non-perishable consumer item, canned food, whatever, that's going to go up by 5%, 10% in the next year. Your money sitting in the bank is earning you, you know, ne nearer to zero. So you can earn 100 times more just by buying something that will go up 10% in the next year. That, that's just a fact. I'm not saying that you can... Uh, fund your retirement by investing in consumer, you know, consumables by, by going out and buy a lot of soap because of inflation. Because eventually there'll be deflation. Things will go down in price in, in some parts of, of the economy. Uh, so, you know, you wouldn't buy something today if you knew it was going to be cheaper tomorrow. Uh, like if, if there's a property slump and property prices are going down, why would you go and buy it? And so, well, property prices are going down everywhere. Why would you go and rush in and buy something unless you're getting a big discount? So you've got to try and prepare for this. And that means investing. And I talked about the main investment areas, you know, the main regulated types of investments. So if you want to learn more about this, tune into my, my free training courses. Uh, there's a link I usually put down below. I also got a channel on YouTube as well, Facebook. Please like and subscribe. Listen to my podcast as well. So please just keep, keep I, always, I, I come on, I give a lot of free information, but I also run courses as well where you can learn in more depth how you can become financially free without necessarily working any harder than you are now. Thanks for listening and have a great day. Have a great evening and stay safe.